it's about that time. Serious, serious. What's happening in your city? Serious, serious. Serious, serious. You got love for your city? Serious, serious. Good evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of City Views. Bringing it to you right here on your local access cable, Altice 5. Glad to be in the house with you. My name is Jacques Williams. I am your gracious host for this journey through the Northwest Hills. Along here with my lovely and talented co-host, the one and only Miss Karen Thomas. My main man, Kareem Holbrook. And on stage with us today is Stephen Ivain, the chairman of the Democratic <laughs> Town Committee. Thank you for joining us today, Steve. Thanks for having me. Glad to have you. And um, we want to give a big shout out to Corice, who will not be able to be here with us this evening. And uh, Corice, we just want to wish you the best. Feel better quick. And, Feel uh, better. Yes, yeah. get back here with us on yes. the show soon for next week. Yeah, definitely. Cameras are missing. <laughs> <laughs> got us here. Again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but we're uh, we got a jam-packed show for you today. Really excited to get this going here for you. We're going to be having some conversations with Stephen I. Vane here uh, about uh, all things Torrington. Uh, also, we're going to be hearing from. The CEO and President of the Northwest Connecticut Chamber of Commerce, Joanne Ryan, she's going to be calling in. And as always, we're going to be having our weekly segment, What's Cooking, with 65th District State Rep, Michelle Cook. So uh, you guys call all your friends and neighbors and tell them to tune in while they can. In the meantime, we're going to get ready to prepare a shout out for our sponsors and turn the floor over to my main man, Kareem yes, Holbrook. Sir. Yes, sir. Today's sponsors. Uh, our sponsors go to Toth Insurance Agency, located at 1151 East Main Street in Torrington, Connecticut. Uh, better protection, better value. They can be reached at 860-496-7771 and on the web at tothins at optonline.net. Mel Brickman and Health Markets, located at 16 McDermott Ave, Suite No. 1 in Torrington, Connecticut. Better call Mel. <laughs> he can be reached at 860-307-1128 and on the web at healthmarkets.com forward slash local dash health dash INS. Can you repeat that five times? <laughs> no, I can't. I can't. I tried. I tried doing it. But I can't. <laughs> Brooke Todd and McNeil Insurance, located at 69 Water Street in Torrington, Connecticut. And they've been keeping an eye on your insurance needs since 1839. They can be reached at 860-598-8753 and on the web at brooktodsmcneil.com. Dr. Michael Curry, located at 30 Peck Road, Suite 2105 in Torrington, Connecticut. And he's been there for uh, pediatric care for over 50 years. Wow. He can be reached at 860-482-8177. And on the web at TorringtonPediatrics.com. And thank you so much, Kareem. We appreciate that. Shout out to our sponsors. And thank yes, you sir. to our sponsors for allowing us to bring you the quality community programming that uh, we do each and every week here at your local cable access, Altice Channel 5. All right. Um, so, Karen. Um, a lot of things going on at the food bank. Uh, we are in a busy <laughs> season. Yes. Um, yes. I mean, you know what? It's crazy because we're only in October, but 
you know what? We're already on the holidays. Right. So we're already doing um, collections of turkeys and all oh, the fixing, wow. fixings and wow. everything. Um, last year we served over 983, mm. I think it was, or something. Over 900. I mean, that wasn't the correct, but over 900. Um, we're going to expect more than that this year. Mm. Yep. Um, so, again, you know what? If you um, are listening, um, Friendly Hands Food Bank can use your turkey or your stuffing or your gravy. Um, and then we also have our Christmas program. Yep. Uh, we have Christmas photos coming up. We have Santa, visits with Santa. So oh. it's very busy at the food bank, but it's always a great time of year. So Absolutely I it love is. it. Nice. <clears throat> Absolutely it is. And, um, you know, we want to encourage all of our viewing audience, uh, especially as we get closer to the holidays, uh, to make those referrals to uh, Friendly Hands Food Bank. And, um, our other food banks as well. Absolutely, everyone, because you know what, there are many programs out there and all of the agencies um, are there to serve the public. Um, there are um, restrictions for holidays, and I should note this, that anybody that is looking, not on the food, okay, but if you're looking to sign up for a Christmas program, mm -hmm. um, you have to choose one agency. Mm -hmm. So whether you choose Friendly Hands, Fish, Salvation Army, Torrington News Service Bureau, and that's just to be equitable and fair. Right. So if you're going to sign up with us, you stay with us. Right. Don't sign up at three others to get, like, 27 gifts. And that's <laughs> just only to be fair, um, right. and that's only for the holidays. But it should be noted that if you are food insecure, you can sign up at all of the food banks. Mm -hmm. You could sign up at uh, Friendly Hands, Salvation Army, Fish, whatever, wow. and you could visit all of them. That is not against the rules. So again, the mo most important thing is to remember that if you are food insecure, contact one of the local agencies, mm -hmm. and we would be more than happy to help you, um, you know, walk you through the process. It's very simple, and that's what we're there for is to feed people. Nice. <clears throat> I absolutely love that. Yeah. And, you know, that's the essence of what community is all about. Absolutely. And, Karen, no one does it better than you. Well, um, we're here, so. Yep, indeed, <laughs> indeed. Okay, can we talk about that? We sh uh, actually, we were just getting ready to uh, bring Stephen to the floor because I know that he's chomping at the bit. He is. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But, uh, yeah, Stephen, uh, you know, when it comes to these types of issues, um, you know, they have overflowing ramifications, especially when you get into the realm of public policy. And uh, with your position as, as the uh, Democratic town chair, um, I'm sure that you're listening to uh, these uh, perspectives being brought to you in a way that, you know, people are looking for some type of solution. And um, I know that it's not fair necessarily to put that burden on you, However, you are in a position to kind of communicate that to the rest of uh, your uh, candidates that are, that are in the party. But talk to us a little bit about uh, you know, your view on community and what elements you believe are important in order to have a robust community. Well, on our Democratic Town Committee, a great deal of conversation is around a community that cares. Right. And uh, our nonprofits are one of those. Right. I, I'm a president of the Chorus Angelica, yep. a children's choir, and we're training kids to sing. It, it's a great initiative. But Karen's initiative is, you know, higher, greater good. Uh, we, we're on track to hit record breaking numbers of homelessness and food needy this year. And uh, maybe we should talk about that. Um, th this is uh, impactful, not for, for just only us right. across the country. Right. Yes. It's an important mm -hmm. event that's happening. Uh, we, we have a housing crisis. Uh, it's not just Torrington, no. again, across the country. Right. Uh, we have people living on our cars. The, the, a lot of government subsidies have trailed off, and we're, we're in a bad situation in many regards. Uh, you know, we're close to our Congress being shut down, yep. and everything mm -hmm. will close. We're, we're going to be in dire need. Mm. Um, we, we, we need volunteers to help on all these initiatives and people that are giving what they can give, if that's their efforts, that, that's great. Mm -hmm. uh, if they could uh, fund it, if they can contribute food, that, that's even better. Uh, so we, we would appreciate that. Yep. But w let's talk about that problem though. We, we have to look at the problem of what can we do to address that problem. Uh, we, we have a housing need. Uh, I would say we, we looked at housing. We, we have a large percent of housing 
that is going unused in our mm -hmm. town. How mm -hmm. do we get that back on the books? Mm -hmm. Start bringing that. And some of that will ease the tensions on high rent prices, yeah. getting those back in use. Mm -hmm. Uh, so let's make that an issue. How do we do that? There's, there's a few approaches we could take to address that. Another is we, we have a, kind of a, a homeless population that is, uh, you know, kind of your nonprofit helps, but really w we probably could use a social worker in our city to help mm. manage those mm. things mm -hmm. because we're using other types of resources in our community to help manage these problems but what if we made it a role because are we using an inordinate amount of police resources, they're not fighting crimes, they're kind of managing <laughs> nuisances. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, because uh, the problem is that they're, uh, if they're not in safe places, not in heated places, we're, we have a lot of emergency calls, a, a lot of issues around that, and we're using all of our services to support that. I, if we had social services, I think these people would be better cared for. Well, let's uh, let's broaden uh, out this conversation and see what uh, Michelle has to uh, contribute to this discussion. You just turn this ever so gently so I don't mess it up. Good evening, Michelle. Good evening. <laughs> How are you all and what is cooking? Uh, well, we have uh, Stephen Ivain uh, here on set with us this evening from the Democratic Town Committee, and uh, we were just talking a little bit about um, how the communities uh, are facing their challenges in regards to some of the uh, social uh, issues that are facing them in regards to homelessness, hunger, um, and uh, those, you know, related subjects that um, obviously uh, cause a lot of uh, cities and municipalities to um, to really strive for solutions. No, nope, and that's those that's all good topical points and um, somewhat hard and difficult conversations too. Welcome, Steve and Ivane, to the show. Um, we're happy to have you. Hi, Michelle. And, um, and I so we have Stephen, we have Karen, Jack, and Kareem's here with us. All right. Well, hello, hello everybody. Hello. It's great to be with you all via the phone, as usual. Is it is it hot in Texas? Oh my goodness. Well, I mean, it's full of a lot of love, you know, for a grandchild. <laughs> so, I mean, the rest of that's kind of insignificant. It could be 200 degrees, and the rest of it wouldn't matter. Right. But um, it's. I mean, the sun is definitely beating down right now. It was chilly this morning, um, which was the coldest I think it's been in a long time here. So. It was probably like 60 degrees this morning and then dew on the grass, but then as the sun goes up and all the stuff, you know, fades away, it is, it is a, it's a warm one, probably about 75, 80, give or take. Yeah, yeah. Well, so. I think um, it's interesting, Michelle, uh, you being in Texas, um, especially while we're having this conversation, because I think Texas kind of mirrors uh, many of the challenges that a lot of communities are facing. Yeah, and I think, you know, specifically in certain parts of, um, of the state, you know, it does do that, too. But I think, you know what, there's not one state that's, that's removed from social challenges. I think it just depends on where you see them and how in tune that you are with them. Um, homelessness is a problem across the country, and, you know, until people decide that it's time to go back to work and, and then folks can realize that taxes need to go down and the cost of living needs to go down for people to be able to live, um, homelessness Again, you know, some people choose that, as we've discussed this before. You know, some people choose that lifestyle, and that is their choice. Um, but the folks that don't choose that but are in a, a, in a position of uncertainty at this, at this time, I mean, there are services out there for folks, but the problem is there's not enough money out there for folks either to be able to get those services because the, the nonprofits and the organizations that are responsible for helping those people um, also are having problems finding staff. So... You know, it's it's a vicious cycle right now, and and I think that the one thing that we often discuss that we need to realize is we need to look after our neighbors and recognize that our communities need to um, stick together through difficult times because at the end of the day, that's that's who we have, and we know that founding fathers and um, and tribes have have taught us that it takes 
it takes a village, and that village doesn't necessarily have a, a capacity of reach. It's just it's our village. Well, I think that uh, ties directly back into you know your committee work uh, in Hartford because um, you know part of that you know overcoming that those challenges are instilling uh, those values in our youngsters at uh, at those formative stages in their life where they understand and accept those values and can carry them with them through the remainder of their formative years. I agree. And, you know, and I think that it's vitally important that we, you know, we go back and focus on having community service as a requirement for graduation. Um, I don't think it needs to be hundreds of hours, but I think that we need to set a foundation of what community service looks like. I think that our scouting organizations, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, um, our church organizations, um, they all have a, an element of foundation in community service and giving back. But for those folks that are not involved in those organizations, then they don't recognize the importance of that. And I think importance on both sides. It's giving and receiving, and I don't mean receiving a financial in return. I mean receiving the love and graciousness of somebody that's on the receiving end of your service. Well, I think sometimes um, it's not always money that uh, helps people in these situations. Just, uh, you know, a gesture or an act of kindness can go a long way into restoring someone's self-esteem and taking away the stigmas that they might be facing during their, during their crisis. No, and that's absolutely true. And, you know, because we are the world of social media and we have, you know, really kind of beat that topic um, over the head for the last few weeks, but, you know, social media does not help any of this cause, right? So, you know, long past has it been you have some, you know, you have someone uh, that you have an issue with to go to that person and have a conversation. Now we just blast it all on Facebook or social media presences. Whether it's true or false, or you know, or before you get the true story from both entities, um, you know, and that that is the demise of, of of us as as a person, because although we can be whoever we want to be online, as Kenny Chesney has told us, um, <laughs> it's 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 really about factual information, and you know, there's there's not a lot of governing and policing on the social media sites. I've done a lot of work with Facebook on trying to make sure that. What that looks like on my, my like on my state pages is is completely factual, and I try to follow that on my on my own personal page as well. Because at the end of the day, the more you know, the more news that's out there that's not real, the more complaints that are out there that are rants as opposed to investigative complaints. Um, you know, that just doesn't make us better. It doesn't make us better people. It doesn't make us a better community. It doesn't make us a better village. Um, it makes us an angry an angry people, an angry village, an angry community. And and there's enough anger and hate in the world. I mean, I look at what's going on overseas and, you know, the, the poor lives that are being lost um, with the senseless fighting um, in Israel and, and all of that. I mean, you know, I think that there's enough hate in the world that we just need to rise above whatever our angers are and figure out how to, to, to work to get along and make, if it's us that are wrong, then make us better. You know, if it's, if it's situations that are wrong, then let's work together to make those better. So. Very well stated, uh, Michelle. And I think that um, in trying to understand these complex issues, um, it's, it's probably advisable to take that moderate objective position because, you know, I just can't fathom you know, regardless of, you know, what side you're on in that particular uh, situation, that it's okay to do what they're doing to each other. I mean, on a, just on a, a purely on a human level, um, it, right. it's kind of, it's kind of tough to digest. But um, I, I, what my concern is, um, is in that situation and, and I've heard some of your colleagues um, from Hartford, um, Senator Blumenthal and uh, Murphy uh, speak on the situation. But, um, you know, I think that what you don't want is for the fallout to, um, you know, affect and impact um, other people that are innocent lives in this situation. 
Right, and I first and foremost think about the children. You right. know, um, children are are vulnerable. They're innocent. Um, until they can formulate a way to develop an opinion that is their own, not one that's influenced upon them. Um, and, and those children, innocent children, innocent women, um, innocent men, right? This is not about uh, a gender thing or an age thing. There are many people that are very innocent in this situation that have lost their lives um, or they've lost their loved ones. And in my world, that's just not okay. And I'm blessed, and we are all blessed to be in, in the great lands that we are in. Um, but I sit back with a heavy heart and realize that, you know, at any given day, we could be very compromised. Um, and that's why I think that we need to not be vulnerable in these situations, but work together to figure out how we can become stronger. Absolutely. Steve, do you have any questions for uh, Michelle? No. Michelle, in terms of aid, for uh, this coming winter, we have Operation Overflow, we have Food Needy, we have Homelessness. Do, do we have any um, assets coming from our capital that, that would help us on, on these fronts? So I had a call yesterday. Um, well, right now we don't have a place for Operation Overflow. Um, I think that that's still in flux as we speak currently. So. You know, with that being said, by us not having a permanent location for, I mean, and I understand that FISH does, um, you know, homelessness housing for roughly around 18 people, give or take. Um, but by us not having a permanent homeless shelter large enough to handle an overflow, that makes us very, um, very unique because a lot of the bigger cities, and I consider us to fall in line with some of those um, bigger cities, they have permanent brick and mortar, large homeless shelters. Um, so, you know, that's that's a conversation that I know that they're having, but right now I don't believe, to my knowledge, short of, short of um, fish, we do not have an, an operation overflow. Um, so that's gonna be, that's gonna be very complex and, um, you know, dangerous if we cannot get that squared away. Um, the money for that, I don't believe, is going to even be released in pos until possibly the end of the year or the first of next year, which is also going to create some hurdles, too, which means, you know, whoever might be the organization that's going to step up and work for, um, for that cause and, and help operate and run the Operation Overflow, they very well might have to front some money until that money gets released, which very wow. well could be the first of the year. Wow. And let's face it, you know, we the cold temperatures are, are almost mm -hmm. upon us. And um, right. we're in, what are we, in mid-October now, the yep. middle of October. Yeah. And this is, this is really um, something that needs to be addressed almost immediately, if not yesterday. Right. So, you know, a, a lot of times this is something that, you know, we've got to work together to find a solution so we can do for, because again, they're human beings. People are hungry, right. they're homeless, and this is something that we all have to, or should agree on, yeah. that we should all agree that we need to help them. Absolutely, right. I think that's that's. And uh, I do know, I do know too that the organizations that have um, that are that have had the contracts in the past are in the process of you know re reapplying for those you know for those dollars. But the problem is, if we don't have an organization in our community, then now we're starting from scratch all over again. Ouch! Um, so that could be that could be very difficult for um, for the folks in in our corner if. You know, if somebody doesn't step up and doesn't have the means to to navigate this population that's going to need help during our cold winter months. And I think right now, and I'm be knocking on wood to say that we're blessed to have our weather as nice as it has been mm -hmm. for as long as it has mm -hmm. been. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. For real. Well, Michelle, um, enjoy your time um, in the Lone Star State. And uh, Yes, I have. Um, I brought my mother. Okay. To meet her great grandson, uh, and so it's a four generation visit. And you know, if anybody are you know is blessed to have the ability to have generational um, opportunities with their families, this is one for me that is just irreplaceable. Right. How cool is that? Well, Michelle, have a safe trip uh, back to us. <clears throat> and for anybody that's listening, Pizza Wars is happening right now um, <laughs> yep. for the YMCA fundraiser at Bad Dog Brewery. Um, and so 
get down there. They're doing pizza wars from now until I think possibly eight o'clock or eight thirty. Karen, I don't remember the time. We'll, we'll yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. There, as soon and, as we get off air, they're all running down. So okay. there'll be a caravan right. then, down. Yeah. You, you should. I'm going to give a plug to Karen um, for her work with um, with uh, cancer, and they're doing a chili cook-off. Um, and tasting on Friday at Bad Dog Brewery. She can fill in the blanks for you on that. My husband's yes, actually substituting for me as I'm t supposed to be a judge. Yes. Um, but I am here, so he's going to be there. So I want to give, you know, make sure that folks have the opportunity to come out and support fundraising for cancer as well. Correct. Correct. Well, you have safe travel, and uh, I'll thank expand you. Thank you all that. as usual. All righty. Well, and we will chat next Tuesday. That sounds great. We'll see you soon, Michelle. Take care. Thank you. Let's uh, hit up those sponsors, and then uh, we'll get on the lines and yes. have a conversation <clears throat> with Joanne Ryan. Yes. All right. Our big city sponsors go to Toth Insurance Agency, located at 51 East Main Street in Torrington, Connecticut. Better protection, better value. He can be reached at 860-496-7771 and on the web at tothins at oponline.net. I think we should have some background music for, for this, should we? I think we? so. I think so. Keep going. All right. Can you beatbox? No, is it? <laughs> Mel Brickman and more. <laughs> Mel Brickman. Better call Mel. Mel. Better call oh, Mel. Mel. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. We've lost it. <laughs> it's been a long day. Pizza Mel Wars. Pizza Brickman. Wars. <laughs> pizza Wars. Pizza Wars. Pizza Wars. Pizza Wars, Pizza Wars. <laughs> He's lost it. He's totally lost it. I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Mel Brickman Health Markets, located at 16 McDermott Ave, Suite Number One in Torrington, Connecticut. You better call Mel. He can be reached at 860-307-1128 and on the web at healthmarkets.com forward slash local dash health dash ins. Uh, Brooke Todd and McNeil Insurance, <laughs> located at 69 Water Street in Torrington, Connecticut. They've been keeping an eye on your insurance needs since 1839. It's a long time. It's a long That's time. He can be reached at 860-598-8753 and on the web at brooktoddmcneil.com. Dr. Michael Curry, located at 30 Peck Road, Suite 2105 in Torrington, Connecticut. Pediatric care for over 50 years. He can be reached at 860-482-8177 and on the web at pediatrics. Uh, TorringtonPediatrics.com. All right. Thanks, Kareem. Yes, sir. All righty. Uh, well, before we jump to Joanne, yeah. I'm just going to talk about that two seconds. Um, for any of you looking for something to do this Friday oh, evening yeah. at Bad Dog Brewery, the Pink Rose Fund, mm. which is uh, mm -hmm. part of the Breast Cancer Fund of Charlotte Hungerford Hospital and Hartford Healthcare, they are doing a chili cook-off this Friday evening at Bad Dog Brewery. Really? And that there will be to benefit that with breast cancer and the Pink Rose Fund. Uh, we have celebrity judges, and it's going to be a great time. Um, they will probably have about 10 to 20 different um, chilies to um, taste. Mm. It's a great evening. Um, the celebrity judges are a lot of fun. They're local celebrities. And it's just a lot of fun. Oh, wow. um, so come on down. Try the chili. Plus there's chili to eat. Have something to drink. And uh, come on down. Cat. And it's for a good cause. Starts at 6 o'clock to about 9 o'clock. Does Catherine Pezzi, uh, is she on the... Uh organizing committee for that? I'm not sure if she's on that committee. I work with Jess Horvath, yeah. who um, who puts together the side with the hospital, yeah. and I just get yeah. the, like the judges and the chili and all that stuff. Mm. Um, so there is a myriad of folks yep. that work on this that should be commended because it really is for a great cause. So if you're not busy, um, you have that. And then don't forget, um, Saturday evening is mm. the Warner Theater mm -hmm. uh, Wine and Food Tasting. That Ooh. is um, a fabulous event every year, so that yep. is Saturday. Saturday night. So put these events on your calendar oh, yeah. and make sure that you come out and support um, our local businesses. Write them down. Write them down. Speaking of writing them down, the conversation that we're going to have with this lady, I call her the big fundamental because she writes everything down. She does yes. everything like 
by the book. But old school. Book. Old school by the I book. I have said, and I, I, I've told her this at the WOW Forum, um, that when I grow up, <laughs> I want to be Joanne Ryan. <laughs> but, and she, she laughed at that, but I'm not going to grow up, so I guess that's never going to happen. Let's but get, I do. I, I, let's get her two cents I, in on this. I love her, so let us get her on there. Joanne? Oh. Help me with the getting Joanne. So I think she's there, but I pushed the button, but there's there's two calls. And we have two calls? So hit hit the one hit the red button that's nearest Joanne. Okay, so there's that one. And then hit re and then hit resume and she should be on. So hit the red button closest to Joanne and then hit resume. Okay, where do you see resume? I see resume. I see I only see the red button next to her. We're, we're in the green. Redial new call. See I want, I don't wanna get rid of her. If we hit that. Yeah, and usually it comes on down there. Let's Let's we need this. button help. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just don't want to. I don't want to disconnect somebody. So we're having technical difficulties. Hello. Hello. Are you th there? She is. What's going on? Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that doesn't sound like Joanne. <laughs> she changed her voice. That's not Joanne. Oh my goodness. Uh, please state your I'm name. Sorry, I just called in. I want to. I want to give a few comments and a few few questions. If, if, if I'm not mistaken, this sounds like right Ray, wrong Ray. Hey man, you didn't forget, <laughs> did you? That's funny. Long What's time going no on, brother. Long time no hear from. I just flipped the channels and I saw you on the TV with the, with your crowd there. I just I just wanted to say hello to the well, that's three of them. Well, that's very thought of you. Thank you so much. How's it going? But the, the only thing is, you got to get what's cooking. You can't keep her on the phone that long. Michelle, <laughs> <laughs> you, you still don't you forgot what I talked to you about? Oh, I I, re I remember what what we've discussed for sure. Is he yeah, but you got to, you know, it's too long because people want to call in and she takes too much, she she talks too much about this and that. I mean, it's nice to talk about this and that, but make it short and sweet. And I'm getting married to the, to the TV program here. Okay, we'll, we'll take that into consideration. <laughs> yeah, so um, say hello to your, your party there at the, at the table and... Uh, I'll, I'll catch back with you again at another time. We'll look forward to it. Thank you so much for calling in. All right. There they are. They're waving. Yeah, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your night. Thank you. Thank you. Good, you. Good, Good night. night. Go down to Bag Dog Brewery and, and eat some pizza with us. And get some pizza. Yeah. 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 There you go. We'll see you there. Thank you. All right. All right. Bye, bye bye. Okay, I did that. Now, is Joanne back hold on, on? Hold on. Let's see what we can yeah, she, she's on two lines. Oh, so, 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 so pick, pick one. Okay, just pick a line. Did you get it? Good evening, Joanne. Hello? Joanne? Hello? And then usually it goes great. Okay, yeah, don't, yeah. we just don't, oh, I'm, no. I don't know. All right, so I'm go I guess the end that call and pick up the other Okay, so end, new call, redial. New call. Oh, can we just call her back? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I am no. I think I after this evening I will be fired from the phone <laughs> portion of the program. Um, so it, I would like to say I apologize for anyone that I have hung up on. Um, it was not on purpose. <laughs> we we, um, we do some we, creative editing. And, you know, exactly, <laughs> you know, that um, this is all live TV and that I just hung up on um, Joey and Ryan. I guess she will probably not be asking me back to WOW next year. So, <laughs> Well, hold on. Let's see if we can. Let's see if she's there. We'll do this. But in the meantime, we've got some fabulous events and things that are going on, like tonight, the Pizza Wars, yes, that's for the YMCA. Yes, yes, yes. Um, you get to go down and sample all of the local pizzerias in the northwest corner that uh, participate. You get to have that, and then you have a nice drink, and it's all for the YMCA. So it's a great fundraiser that they do every year. Really? Um, and who doesn't love pizza? So, right. again, um, that is a huge event. It's usually um, very, very well attended. So tonight at Bad okay. Dog Brewery, I think it'll go on to like 8 or 9 o'clock.
So when you get out of here, if you uh, are, are listening right now, just Definitely. stop listening Definitely. to us. Get Definitely. in your car, drive down to Bad Dog Brewery, and you will love to try some of that fabulous pizza. Mm. Um, in the meantime, um, we are still having technical difficulties with the phone. But uh, well, we could so talk Stephen, about politics. Talk about you and what 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 else other topics that you have there? Well, we have a very important election coming up, we November seventh. Uh oh, oh, there's oh, there he's back, Joanne. But yes, he's back. We are so sorry. We had technical difficulties. It's all Karen's fault. No, that's okay. See how he's throwing me under the bus, Joanne? <laughs> it wasn't my fault. Yeah, I noticed that. I noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you, Joanne? You are coming off the success of an amazing 19-year tradition with the WOW Forum. If you could talk about that for just a quick minute because it was amazing, and then we will talk about other things. Well, thank you. I, I'm, first of all, grateful that the, we receive the tremendous support each year that we do. And when I think of 19 years, I, I, I have to pinch myself. We receive the tremendous support Crazy. Each year that we uh, it, it is. It's wonderful. And uh, Karen, thank you. You were outstanding, tremendous. Everyone loved you as the master of ceremonies. Well, you know what? It was my and honor, but it just, I mean, this this is such a wonderful thing for women. And you know what? I have to shout for out. Men too. For men, too. It's where I was going. I have to shout out that the men that came, like you, DJ, and, and a few of the people, um, what an amazing thing. Yes. Our treasurer of our board, Ted Schaefer, was there. Yes, and, and it was an amazing day, and it was uplifting, empowering. And, Joanne, you just do a phenomenal job, and, and uh, we, you should be commended for all that you do for the Northwest Connecticut Chamber of Commerce. Well, well, well thank you. It's my pleasure. And I, have to thank you. Um, I truly love it, and, and I think that you have to love what you're doing. But I must say, 19 years ago, when I be, or 22 years ago, when I became chamber president, we realized there was nothing in this region for women to help motivate them, to excite them, to uh, give them ideas and thoughts, and, and actually some educational moments. Um, so we started 19 years ago. We will now we're now preparing for our 20th year. And Karen, thank you. You led an outstanding day. It was truly amazing and each year I, I do pinch myself because how can each year continue to go forward and get better and um, I know Jacques thank you so much as chairman of our board and also a very interested party who also uh, was the entertainment at, during the auction it was it was outstanding and uh, we all loved every minute of it and we have to thank those of you who are supportive and you saw Jacques, saw Karen, and what an amazing job. And I have to fill you in, and this is the key of someone who's successful like Karen. One of our speakers, we found out about an hour before she was scheduled that she could not be there. <laughs> and she had a very, she was, uh, she's pregnant and due any minute. And I think the doctor said, you are not leaving the town. You're going into the hospital. Before and, you go into labor. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pro, pro, not yet, but. She still hasn't had the baby either, by the way. Oh, goodness. But um, Karen sprinted and got the audience engaged. I think the audience loved that because we have not ever devoted a full 45 minutes to just audience chatter. And even if you didn't want to say hello, Karen went over to you with that microphone, and you said hello, and you got talking. <laughs> and it, it was outstanding. And um, I just have to say thank you because, I mean, I, I'm so, so thrilled that it has succeeded for the 19 years. And, and we're preparing. Do you know we have three people who have already called me to be speakers for next year? Oh, that's including, amazing. The, including the amazing speaker who could not be there. She said, I will not have another baby for you. <laughs> I will come and be there. I so, love it. Thank you. Well, but, you know, you can't even sit back and enjoy, you know, and enjoy and relax and thank you thank everyone for this outstanding event we're at without without going forward with all the other events that are coming up and so we're uh, very thrilled that we have the support of, of an amazing community and um, outstanding supporters a board led by Jacques and Maria Gonzalez as vice chair and um, it's just wonderful Gina um, Bunch is the secretary and Ted Schaefer the Economic Development Director for uh, Winston is Treasurer. Uh, we just have a, an outstanding leadership group working very hard, supporting everything that is being done, getting ready for all the next projects, 
panicking when we know that they're all falling right one right after the other. But uh, but it's terrific and great. And I want to say to all the listeners and all of you, you know, you're welcome at everything. It's not a, an exclusive close organization. We're welcoming. We want you to uh, attend events, visit us, go on our website and look at what's coming up. Business after hours. Business with breakfast. Um, a wonderful, wonderful event, November 17th, with probably the key demographer in the country um, who is going to share with us the latest in the trends that are occurring around the United States, throughout New England, and in Connecticut, and in the Northwest Corner. So um, we just have a great, uh, great plans coming up for the fall as well. Well, the fall, we're into it. And um, it's just um, possible because of you sitting at the table and all the support you're giving us. So thank you. Well, you're, you're too kind, uh, Joanne, but um, <clears throat> there are a few more uh, events coming up that uh, if you have the uh, opportunity to take the liberty to talk to our audience about, uh, I'd love for you to do so. Okay, great. Thank you. You know, and I have to be very, very honest. We did postpone the business showcase that was scheduled for next week. A week from Thursday, we thought, oh, boy, how could we schedule an event so big as that, so close to WOW, and right before our economic forecast. So we are postponing that till April. I believe it's April 18th. Uh, that's already scheduled, but uh, we will keep you posted on that. Uh, but we're also um, preparing our activities for our regional educational partnership. You'll be happy to know that Dr. Michael Rook, the president of Northwestern Connecticut Community College is the chair of that committee, and he and I met with the superintendents of schools, all the region, all the superintendents in the entire northwest corner of Connecticut. We had lunch with them last week, a Friday it was, and they were so amazed, did not, were not aware that the chamber is so engaged in their schools. Now, it kind of scared me a bit. <laughs> uh, but we have wonderful relationship with their principals and with their guidance counselors and their teachers, and that is key. And you'll be happy to know that we are um, instituting, well, inaugurating a, a new event for us beginning in January. Well, it, the fall will kick it off. It's called the um, Civics Civics Bee, not Spelling Bee. I keep saying Spelling Bee. <laughs> it's a Civics Bee. It's with the United States Chamber of Commerce who wow. called me and said, please do this because we don't have anyone in your region doing this. And, of course, you know, heaven forbid we walk away from an opportunity for all of you. So we will be working with 6th, 7th, and 8th graders throughout all the middle schools in Northwest Connecticut. And what we're loving about that is we've long realized that we can't just deal with juniors and seniors in high school. They're terrific and wonderful. But many of them at that point are either lined up with jobs or they're looking at colleges and know where they're going. It's that younger student who is they're so brilliant, but we have to give them the opportunity to see what is available and the phenomenal resources in this region. So we really are delighted with that event. And you will be hearing about that, and we will be kicking that off within the next two weeks. Um, again, another exciting program, and we are very honored that the U.S. Chamber would call us to say, you know, get going and do this. So, of course, we will do it. Joanne, um, I, I, I got to uh, tell you, though, I, I, I'm really um, liking the fact that you're doing that with uh, students in the 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. My interest in uh, social studies and politics and civics began in 7th grade with uh, a teacher who was just um, committed to making sure that um, we understood the fabric uh, and the value system uh, of our country. And uh, those, uh, those lessons stayed with me the rest of my life. And uh, well, I thank think- thank you, Jacques. I, I think that's it's- precisely why we're doing this. Absolutely. Just what you said. I think you that's know, we a, just don't, we can't wait. That we have to work with these brilliant young people right now. Right. Uh, and, and I have to admit, I have to tell you that not only is Jacques uh, on our board and chair, but Stephen is also a member of our board of directors. So we're very, very <laughs> grateful to that. And um, 
There could be room for you, Karen. You never know. <laughs> well, I told you I want to be you when I grow up. I haven't grown up yet, but I'm going to. I'm following you. <laughs> okay. I know. Can you imagine she came up to me at WOW and I, I didn't know what to say? <laughs> well, I mean that, that truly. And, you know, maybe you can just talk just a little bit about how somebody can become a member of the chamber because, you know, it is absolutely the services that the Northwest Connecticut Chamber offers is just absolutely incredible not only for a solopreneur, an entrepreneur, but any business with all of the different um, programs that you offer. So how can one become a member? Well, thank you for this opportunity to share that. It's very easy. Go online at the web. Go on our website, uh, www.nwctchamberofcommerce.org and look under membership and look under the application. It's a one-pager, very, very easy, very reasonable to invest for one year, and it's the resources and the introductions and the networking and the opportunities that we're offering businesses because we know that there's so much happening, we really need to focus on what we can do to grow business, and we're so delighted that we have a very strong business community. I think of, of the, the, the business is going through COVID. I had our chamber phone tied into our, my home phone. So I took all the calls that were coming into the chamber because we were all closed. I was so amazed at the people who called in who just needed that tip. Who do I call? Where do I get help? I can't pay my rent. How am I going to keep my business open? Um, so, you know, we just tried to help all those wonderful, wonderful people. And believe it or not, I think we were doing much, much better than many other parts of the state and the region because we kept all these lines of communication open. And I know, Karen, you and your outstanding organization did wonders for, for people who really needed it. And uh, we all dropped our everything and, and just focused. And I'll, I'll tell you a little secret. I, I, I work at the office. I, um, you know, I did talk to the governor's staff. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm going to be at I'm going to be in the chamber. And at that point, it was on Kennedy Drive. I said I have to be there because there's so much there's so much material there that I could not transport home. Right. And it was not on our online. Uh, but that worked out fine. And, of course, as you hopefully you all know, we're on Field Street right across from the courthouse in the old Excelsior Building for Torrington Company. We love our new location. It's very open, spacious, welcoming. Just drop in and, and visit us. We have uh, directories to give everybody. There's material, flyers, brochures from every organization and uh, possible, both profit and not-for-profit. So we really are, hope that we're a resource. And I think what I love most of all is that everyone on our staff loves what they're doing because we are really making a difference in people's lives and helping the business community, and that's truly what it is. We want to enhance the quality of life and therefore make this a better place in which to live and work. And in working with organizations such as those that you all are, are involved in, it's working. It really is working. And it's business working together. So um, I love your show, by the way. I do watch it, believe it or not. <laughs> well, uh, Joanne, we appreciate you uh, supporting the show. But uh, what we appreciate about you is your, your fine leadership and the standards that uh, you put forth every day uh, to give us an example on uh, how we're supposed to uh, conduct ourselves in this uh, business environment. So thank you very much for well, all you do. Well, thank you. You know, I have to say it really is an honor to, to be in that role. And um, I, I just really appreciate all that you're doing. And because of my involvement around the state, um, I, I, I every day I thank, thank the Lord for our wonderful blessings that we have right here in the northwest corner. Um, you know, I'm chair of the Board of Regents for Higher Education for the Connecticut State Colleges and Universities. And we are the only chamber in the state so engaged in working with educators, and that is key. I mean, Mike Rook is chair of our regional educational partnership. We're closely aligned to Northwestern Connecticut Community College. In fact, Friday, and Jacques will be the master of ceremonies, we have our, leader, our legislative reception for our legislators. We will have some of the key figures from Connecticut State Colleges and Universities there, but it will be our legislative delegation, and all of you are welcome. 
It begins at 7.30 Friday morning at the Resource Center at Northwestern Community College. Just get off the highway. The building where their library is on the right, park either across the street if you can't find a place right there, and please join us. There's no cost, but it'll be well worth the hour that we spend with these brilliant people. Well, Joanne, thank you so much for taking time out of your very ambitious schedule, and uh, we hope that this won't be the last time that uh, we'll, you'll be appearing on the show. Well, thank you so much for having me, and thank you to all of you for doing so much for the communicate the communication of all of these amazing things that are happening in our community. Take thank care. Have a great thank evening. You. You too. Thank Bye -bye. you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're CEO welcome. and Bye -bye. President of the Northwest Connecticut Area Chamber of Commerce, the one and only Joanne Ryan. And with that said, we're going to roll it over to Kareem so uh, he can do our shout outs. Shout outs, shout outs, okay. shout outs. T Town Shout Outs is sponsored by Torrington Downtown Partners, growing downtown Torrington one business at a time. To Dawn's Getaway at 24 Winstead Road in Torrington, Connecticut. Christie's Restaurant at 545 Winstead Road in Torrington, Connecticut. <clears throat> Health Insurance Services at 438 Main Street in Torrington, Connecticut. Wall Wall and Fraunhofer. <laughs> located at one, one, 117 Main Street in Torrington, Connecticut. So Latina Cafe, located at 31 Hungerford Street in Torrington, Connecticut. Jimmy's Store, located at 1238 East Main Street in Torrington, Connecticut. Five Point Art Center, located at 855 United University Drive in Torrington, Connecticut. And George's Music, George's Music, located at 905 New Harmington Road in Torrington, Connecticut. To our big city sponsors, Tolt Insurance Agency, located at 1151 East Main Street in Torrington, Connecticut. Better protection, better value. They can be reached at 860-496-7771 and on the web at toltins at optonline.net. To Mel Brickman and Health Markets, located at 16 McDermott Ave, Suite No. 1 in Torrington, Connecticut. Better call Mel. He can be reached at 860-307-1128 and on the web at healthmarkets.com forward slash local dash health dash INS. Brook Todd and McNeil's Insurance, located at 69 Water Street in Torrington, Connecticut. They've been keeping an eye on your insurance needs since 1839. They can be reached at 860-598-8753 and on the web at brookstoddmcneil.com. To Dr. Michael Curry, located at 30 Peck Road, Suite 2105 in Torrington, Connecticut. Pediatric care for over 50 years. He can be reached at 860 482-8177 and on the web at TorringtonPediatrics.com Thank you, Corrine, for yes. the shout outs and uh, for the uh, mention of our sponsors. And before uh, we end tonight's show, I do want to take this opportunity to address the families uh, in our community that uh, have just lost some real big figures. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We just lost uh, Vic Michelle um, what an icon. You know? What a community icon. Vic Michelle, um, I mean, the things that he was involved in, wh what he's done, um, his family, everything. Um, I, I don't even know what else to say. What a great man. Yep. Uh, what a great man. Um, so to Donna and Brooke, uh, we offer our Absolutely. condolences on Absolutely. behalf of all of us. Yes. Um, but he was just, uh, he was such a figure, uh, a prominent figure Absolutely. for Northwest Connecticut. Um, and uh, a great friend of, of Joanne's uh, just uh, left us too, uh, Marie Soliani. Oh, goodness. Another uh, icon. Another With icon. City, she was another, on city council she, and all yep. of those things. I mean, she's another one. Um, powerhouses, these people. These were not just people that were, you know, just out and about. You know, I mean, everybody knew them. They've been there for years. So, oh, absolutely. And I'll, I'll never forget, because uh, Marie was on the show a couple of times, and the one thing that she always impressed upon me in uh, her public service uh, in the area of politics, uh, she said, you know, I don't consider myself a politician. I consider myself a public servant. Yes. And there's such a difference um, in those definitions and how you apply yourself and approach the position. And 
Uh, she was just uh, a gem with a knowledge of wisdom and a, a huge heart and uh, just a determined yes. individual. Absolutely. But, you know? uh, but uh, uh, and to her family, um, Mike and the Lisa, and, you know, all of the, um, the family, um, our condolences. Again, uh, an icon. Yep. You know? And then we lost uh, Mary Jane Grinick, uh, former oh, mayor of mayor. Torrington. Yeah. Wow. You know? Yep. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, I think it's important, though, that uh, as we remember these, you know, fine, upstanding uh, community uh, leaders, that we understand the legacies that uh, they left behind for all of us. And we should be grateful because uh, these uh, lives uh, actually were lived so that those of us who continue on can maybe uh, mold a, a better pathway for they were all about community. Us. All, about all it. three of them that you all mentioned. And, you know, our condolences to the Grenick family as well. And, you know, again, they were people that, um, like you said, were icons for yep. Northwest Connecticut, not just Torrington, but Northwest Connecticut as a whole. Um, and they, you know, really um, good people. Absolutely. Good people. So we definitely wanted to acknowledge the families here from City Views and give you our heartfelt condolences and um, let you know that uh, we understand the impact that uh, these people had. Um, huge loss. Huge losses, definitely. Uh, Stephen, thank you so much for uh, coming Thanks on. Thanks for the having show. me on. Now, yeah. we know that your time was a little limited, so we'll have to allow you a little more cachet the next time you're on the show. Okay. No I phone <laughs> errors, I promise. They fired me already. He slipped me a note under the table, yeah. said, You're fired from the phones. Okay. Yeah. But I well, just, if I could say one yeah, thing, sure. November 7th, we need people to come out and vote. Absolutely. This is a low voter turnout year because we, we don't have the mayor, the governor, or the president. Right, you have the, yeah. But I would tell you that the biggest impact to our local lives in Torrington mm -hmm. are your immediate local municipal leaders. Call them, vote for them, read up on it, go to our Democrat Town website, and you could read the biographies and, and write-ups we, we have on, on the issues, on our candidates, it's worth the read. Uh, so come up to speed and make sure you vote on November 7th. Right, and yeah. the Board of Ed, that, that's, a, that's a huge thing too for the, the futures Absolutely. of our children. That, there's yes. quite a few um, re-elections or, or, you know, yeah. what do you each, want to call each it? Each party will have three right. candidates. Right. There, there's a forum tomorrow night at 5.30 at CAFTA, 100 Prospect Street. Yes. It's open to the public. Please attend. Uh, you could ask questions to the yes. candidates, and uh, it, it's not a political debate. It's a discussion right. on priorities in education. You have the ability to shape our future. Yes. How do we do that? We, we have the opportunities that we discussed earlier, teaming up the local businesses, uh, getting those uh, skills growth, teaming up with our Chamber of Commerce. There's a lot of opportunities. How do we do that? How do we manage our academics around that? Great, great information. Absolutely it is. And I think uh, it's important going forward to uh, understand that some of the things that we discussed tonight and, you know, we're kind of like probing, you know, the, uh, the ethos for solutions. One of the most impactful solutions that we can apply to many of these challenges are the right to exercise your vote. Mm -hmm. um, the more people that come out to vote, the more we can tell what the will of the people actually is. Well, and you have a voice. You have a voice. You and that voice. is huge. Don't sit back and say, I didn't vote because I didn't, you know, then you don't have a voice. So yeah. get out there and vote so your voice can be heard. But sure. put and skin in the game because yes. if you don't vote, uh, how are you going to explain well, why something didn't happen? Exactly. If that was your priority, you should be asking your elected representative to explain that to me. Yes. Absolutely. So, so please um, do so. We're going to have you back, Stephen. Thank you. Yes. Okay. All right. And uh, we want to thank each and every one of you for uh, tuning in to another episode of City Views. We'll Sir. be back coming at you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Get your info right here with the crew on City Views. And don't forget to check out Bad Dog Brew and get down there and eat some pizza. See ya. City Views, City Views, City Views.